you know, Samba XP. Um, it may be the first uh, conference for some people, uh, Samba XP conference. Normally, we would be hosted in uh, sunny Göttingen, Germany. Um, and hopefully, uh, pandemic permitting, we'll be able to um, convene next year uh, in Göttingen um, for uh, an in-person conference. Having said that, there are some great advantages uh, to being online. Um, uh, people uh, are able to join at their own convenience, so hopefully um, it will. Um, people will drop in and out and we'll have a, a wide range of participants. Um, I'd also like to uh, reiterate what Carolyn said and thank very much uh, our sponsors um, and CERNET for hosting the conference and setting things up technically. Running conferences uh, in a pandemic and online um, is a challenge. I know it's the second year now, so we should be getting used to this, but it's, uh, it's still hard to get everything working correctly. And so, um, I really would like to thank CERNET for hosting it, for arranging everything, for setting everything up. It's much appreciated. And also for our sponsors, uh, Microsoft and Google, um, who also have helped fund the event and, and uh, have been doing so for many years now. Um, and hopefully we'll um, keep doing so for many years in the future um, to help the conference be a success. So, um, I've actually forgotten what number Samba XP this is. Um, it's, um, Samba has been going uh, now for, I believe, over 25 years. Um, the conference has been running for quite a long time. Um, so it's interesting to, to look at, at where we are. There's been some interesting things in the uh, Samba universe uh, this year. One of the interesting things that I was involved with is we've issued a clarification notice to our licensing. So as you may or may not know, uh, Samba is licensed under the GPL v3. We moved from GPL v2 to GPL v3 around Samba 3.5. Um, some people like the GPL v3, some people don't. Um, I've My feelings on this have evolved over the years. Um, but one of the things that has always been a little difficult for people wanting to build products with Samba is knowing what parts uh, need to be included uh, in shipping Samba source code, because obviously we are an open source project, and what parts vendors can keep proprietary. So one of the useful things we managed to do this year in conjunction with the Software Freedom Conservancy is to issue a clarification notice that actually explains when people are building products with Samba, where the boundaries of the GPL licensing begin and end, basically. And um, one of the useful things around that is that we clarified that if you are building um, what's called a virtual file system interface into Samba, um, which is a piece that allows you to use Samba as an SMB3 front end, to um, a possibly, hopefully not, but possibly proprietary um, distributed or clustered file system or other kind of file system, cloud file system, backend, that the code that goes directly into Samba, the VFS interface, does come under GPL v3, but any code that that, co that interface calls does not. So what's an example of this? Um, if you are... Now, the examples I'm going to use are, are Gluster and Ceph because they're open source projects anyway. But um, what that would mean is imagine that you were building um, a Samba backend for the file server that was talking to a distributed file system like Gluster or Ceph. What that would mean is that the glue code that you write to mate Samba to Gluster or Ceph, that would need to be GPLv3 as normal. But Gluster and Ceph themselves could be a different license. They could be proprietary, they could be Apache, they could be, you know, they, they we wouldn't consider them to be under the GPL v3. And what I'm hoping is that that as a clarification uh, will help people who might want to use Samba to front end uh, SMB services to uh, new and interesting um, 
file systems, um, of which there are always there are always uh, many being created. Um, the Active Directory coder has um, been uh, developed further. Uh, um, we've had an ongoing series of um, CVEs, um, basically security fixes, um, and you know. I think it's a sign of maturity. Uh, I used to get very upset whenever we'd have CVEs, especially if they were my fault. But uh, in the words of Bruce uh, Schneer, uh, security is a process, um, not a, an endpoint. So the way we, that we deal with CVEs, I think, has matured. Um, we're having, we're able to do a very um, mature process, um, work with vendors. Um, and I think the nice thing is that people who use Samba have learned to trust our CV handling. Uh, we're able to keep things um, quiet until uh, it's appropriate to release them. We're able to fix the bugs in a reasonably timely fashion. Um, and we're able to offer a guarantee for people using Samba that we're able to support our code and able to um, produce a, a, a reasonable and secure code base that people can use. Um, there's uh, quite a lot of rewriting going on inside Samba at the moment. Uh, Samba is, a, as I've pointed out, for an open source project, it's, it's quite old. It's about as old as the Linux kernel. Um, and so there are many old and crufty areas uh, inside it. I actually uh, ran into some of them, um, some of them my fault, when I was um, working on the, the bug that I will be talking about. Uh, in my talk at, at 6.30 a.m. my time, um, at the bottom of the hour. Um, so uh, there's a continuous uh, set of uh, fixes and rewrites going on, which I think is a, a sign of a healthy project, um, that we're not just sort of working on the new stuff, we're actually maintaining uh, and improving our, old, our older things too. Um, having said that, there's some interesting new stuff going in. Uh, I think... Um, there's uh, some uh, talk from METS on the IOU ring interface into the Linux kernel, which uh, has the potential to greatly improve, um, probably already has greatly improved uh, our file serving speed. There's also an ongoing rewrite uh, of the VFS um, to make us more handle based, which I believe Ralph is going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, that's something that's um, uh, been very interesting. I've been, for me, I've been heavily involved with um, the reason for that is um, it, it's quite interesting. Back when Samba started, uh, our main clients were actually DOS, uh, if people can remember back that far, uh, and very early versions of Windows, Windows 3.1. And the semantics uh, of file sharing in that environment are very, very different to what we have now with SMB3. So the first real rewrite of Samba took place when Windows NT shipped. Um, and um, well, Windows NT had actually already shipped when we were going, but it, the first rewrite was to sub mostly support our in internals for Windows NT. Um, and what we did was we rewrote a lot of the internals um, basically to standardize on a, a Windows NT-like internal file system interface. Um, and then um, the DOS stuff became a layer on top of that. And what's happening right now is uh, essentially, that's happening again. There was an initial rewrite for SMB2, um, so that the front end is now SMB2 based and calls into the um, basically the Windows file system layer. And now, what's happening is we're modernizing the back end VFS to look very much like um, more like a, a Windows file server with handle based calls, um, only one or two places where path names are translated into handles. Um, and the interesting thing is we're doing that at the same time as we are um, keeping the code base working. So I've previously um, described this, and I think it's still accurate, as trying to replace the wings on an airplane while it's still running, uh, while it's still flying. Um, and so this has had some challenges, um, some interesting properties, which I'm really looking at. Yeah, uh, let me let me just check a, a view over. So there's a bunch of very interesting talks. 
Um, oh, one of the things that uh, we've gotten a lot more serious about is testing uh, and continuous integration. Uh, we chose to use GitLab, um, uh, which is um, apologies to our friends at Microsoft uh, for not using GitHub, but GitLab is a little more open source friendly uh, and is a, a, an open source, um, mostly open source uh, product. So um, that seemed a, a, a more appropriate choice to us. And um, now that we've moved to a GitLab based workflow, um, we're seeing that it's somewhat easier for new contributors who didn't grow up with the old crusty command line uh, CVS interfaces that some of us old timers did. Um, it's a lot easier for the, the new modern hip Git based kids uh, to actually uh, pull a copy of SAML down, work on it and submit changes back that can be run under our continuous integration uh, regime. So um, that's something that's um, mainly been driven by Andrew um, and Metz. Um, and uh, there are a lot of people doing a lot of work behind that. I can't talk too much about that, mainly because I've actually done very little of that work. So I, I very much depend on the people who are, who are doing that. So the great thing about Samba, and I, I think um, I can bring this up, um, related to that is it's very much a team effort. It's not um, for, um, it, there's a reason that we're actually called the Samba team. Um, and that is because Samba is a bunch of people working together collaboratively. Um, and let's not forget that. That's um, the sign of a healthy uh, open source project. There, there are many people who have many potentially different interests but they're all able to work together to actually improve and help maintain the code. Um, let's see. Um, so um, this is running over Zoom. There are two tracks. Um, I'll, we'll see how well this works. I'll probably be, I only have one Zoom client on my desktop, possibly like most of you. So I've, rather than trying to follow two tracks at once, I might be leaving uh, tracks and then rejoining another. Um, it's great to see that the, um, it's great to see that the uh, chat is working and hopefully we can have uh, a collaborative environment going on through the chat, excuse me. Me uh, getting a little dry in the morning. Um, it will, uh, hopefully this will, this will work really well. It worked pretty well last year. Um, I'm hoping, um, that we can have some very productive conversations. We'll all learn something. And, um, I believe that there is, uh, an IELTS lab that's also being run virtually on Friday. And I'm hoping to hear more about that from Cerner and Microsoft, who are the people hosting and running that. Uh, well, actually, I think it's Microsoft hosting it um, later on, uh, possibly in near the end, end of the conference. So um, I'm actually at about 6.30, but I'm kind of running out of things to comment on. So um, hopefully you won't mind if we... Uh, take a break for uh, in about in a few minutes um, while I, I have my slides ready, but I uh, just want to run through them one more time um, before I, I start going. And uh, thank you so much for everyone joining. And I hope everyone has a really, really productive and interesting conference. And I'm really hoping to see everybody in person um, in Gottingham next year. Uh, I hope everybody uh, is very safe. I hope everyone who's able to and wants to has the vaccines. Um, and so, yes, with that, um, let's take a, a, a short break because you don't want to hear me prattling on for another 10 minutes just to hear me another talking for another 45. So let's take a short break. Um, and um, maybe uh, if there's uh, nothing else going on, we'll start again at, uh, at the bottom of the hour. Uh, that would be 6.30 a.m. my time, so uh, I'm not sure what time zones it is for all of you. All right, thank you very much. If anyone has uh, anyone they want to chat, please unmute uh, anyone they want to say, or please use the chat or unmute yourself. Um, but thanks very much. <laughs>